The Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela, Spanish and Galician, Cathedral de Santiago de Compostela, is part of the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Santiago de Compostela and is an integral component of the Santiago de Compostela World Heritage Site in Galicia, Spain. The cathedral is the reputed burial place of Saint James the Great, one of the apostles of Jesus Christ. The cathedral has historically been a place of pilgrimage on the way of St. James since the early Middle Ages and marks the traditional end of the pilgrimage route. The building is a Romanesque structure, with later Gothic and Baroque additions. History According to legend, the Apostle St. James the Great brought Christianity to the Iberian Peninsula. In 44 AD, he was beheaded in Jerusalem. His remains were later brought back to Galicia, Spain. Following Roman persecutions of Spanish Christians, his tomb was abandoned in the 3rd century. According to legend, this tomb was rediscovered in 814 AD by the hermit Pelagius, after he witnessed strange lights in the night sky. Bishop Theodomirus of Iria recognized this as a miracle and informed King Alfonso II of Asturias and Galicia 791-842. The king ordered the construction of a chapel on the site. Legend has it that the king was the first pilgrim to this shrine. This was followed by the first church in 829 AD and then in 899 AD by a pre-Romanesque church, ordered by King Alfonso III of Leon, which caused the gradual development of this major place of pilgrimage. In 997, the early church was reduced to ashes by Al Mansur ibn Abi Amir, army commander of the Caliph of Cordoba. The Al-Andalus commander was accompanied on his raid by his vassal Christian lords, who received a share of the loot, while St. James' tomb and relics were left undisturbed. The gates and the bells, carried by local Christian captives to Cordoba, were added to the Aljama Mosque. When Cordoba was taken by King Ferdinand III of Castile in 1236, these same gates and bells were then transported by Muslim captives to Toledo, to be inserted in the Cathedral of St. Mary of Toledo. Construction of the present cathedral began in 1075 under the reign of Alfonso VI of Castile and the patronage of Bishop Diego Pelors. It was built according to the same plan as the monastic brick church of St. Cernan in Toulouse, probably the greatest Romanesque edifice in France. It was built mostly in granite. Construction was halted several times and, according to the Liber Sancti Jacobi, the last stone was laid in 1122. But by then, the construction of the cathedral was certainly not finished. The cathedral was consecrated in 1211 in the presence of King Alfonso IX of Leon. According to the Codex Calixtinus, the architects were Bernard the Elder, a wonderful master, his assistant Robertus Galperinus, and, later possibly, Esteban, master of the cathedral works. In the last stage, Bernard the Younger was finishing the building, while Galperinus was in charge of the coordination. He also constructed a monumental fountain in front of the North Portal in 1122. The city became an episcopal see in 1075 and the church its cathedral. Due to its growing importance as a place of pilgrimage, it was raised to an archiepiscopal see by Pope Urban II in 1100. A university was added in 1495. The cathedral was expanded and embellished with additions in the 16th, 17th and 18th centuries. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Exterior of the cathedral. 
Each of the facades along with their adjoining squares constitute a magnificent urban square. The Baroque façade of the Praza do Obradiro Square was completed by Fernando de Casas Novoa in 1740. Also in Baroque style is the Asabitria façade by Ferro Carvero and Fernande Cirilla, later modified by Ventura Rodriguez. The Pratrias façade, built by the master Esteban in 1103, and most importantly the Portico da Gloria, an early work of Romanesque sculpture, were completed by Master Matteo in 1188. <laughs> Portico da Gloria The Portico da Gloria Portico of the Gang Good, in Galician, of the Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela is a Romanesque portico by Master Matteo and his workshop, commissioned by King Ferdinand II of Leon. To commemorate its completion in 1188, the date was carved on a stone and set in the cathedral, and the lintels were placed on the portico. Finalizing the complete three-piece set took until 1211, when the temple was consecrated in the presence of King Alfonso IX of Leon. The portico has three round arches that correspond to the three naves of the church, supported by thick piers with pilasters. The central arch, twice as wide as the other two, has a tympanum and is divided by a central column—a mullion containing a depiction of St. James. Vertically, the lower part is formed by the bases of the columns, decorated with fantastic animals, the middle portion consists of columns adorned with statues of the apostles, and the upper part supports the base of the arches crowning the three doors. The sculpture is intended to serve as an iconographic representation of various symbols derived from the Book of Revelation and books of the Old Testament. Topic: <tumpanum>, Tympanum. The arrangement of the tympanum is based on the description of Christ that John the Evangelist makes in Revelation chapter 1 v 1 to 18. In the center, the Pantocrator is shown, with the image of Christ in majesty, displaying in his hands and feet the wounds of crucifixion. Surrounding Christ is the Tetramorph with the figures of the four evangelists with their attributes, left, top Saint John and the Eagle and below Saint Luke with the Ox, on the right above, Saint Matthew on the hood of the tax collector and below Saint Mark and the Lion, on both sides of the evangelists, behind Mark and Luke, are four angels on each side with the instruments of the Passion of Christ. Some are, without touching them directly, the cross and crown of thorns left, and lance and four nails right, another the column in which he was whipped and the jar through which Pontius Pilate proclaimed his innocence. Above the heads of these angels, two large groups of souls of the blessed, forty in all. In the archivolt of the central tympanum are seated the elders of the Apocalypse, each holding a musical instrument, as if preparing a concert in honor of God. <laughs> Mullion In the Mullion, the figure of Saint James is seated with a pilgrim's staff, as a patron of the Basilica. Saint James appears with a scroll which contains written Missit me Dominus the Lord sent me. The column just above his head with a capital which represents the temptations of Christ. On three of its sides, facing the inside of the temple, two kneeling angels pray. At the foot of the saint is another capital with the figures of the Holy Trinity. Under the Apostle is a representation of the tree of Jesse, the name given to the family tree of Jesus Christ from Jesse, father of King David. This is the first time that this subject is represented in religious iconography in the Iberian Peninsula. The column rests on a base where there is a figure with beard to his chest, perhaps an image of Noah and two lions. 
at the foot of the central column at the top inside, looking towards the main altar of the cathedral, is the kneeling figure of the master Matteo himself, holding a sign on which is written Architectus. This image is popularly known as Santo dos Croques from the ancient tradition of students hitting their heads against the figure for wisdom, a tradition that was adopted later by pilgrims, although steps are being taken to limit access, to stem deterioration from which the work has suffered. <laughs> Jams In the columns of the central door and two side doors, the apostles are represented, as well as prophets and other figures with their iconographic attributes. All are topped with its own capital which represents different animals and human heads with leaf motifs. The names of all the figures are on the books or scrolls held in their hands. The four pillars of the portico are based on strong foundations which represent various groups of animals and human heads with beards. For some historians, these figures are images of demons and symbolize the weight of glory the portico in this case crushing sin. Other sources give an apocalyptic interpretation, with wars, famine and death represented by the beasts with situations that can only be saved by human intelligence the heads of older men. <laughs> Side doors The arch of the right door represents the last judgment. The double archivolt is divided into two equal parts by two heads. Some authors identify these heads with the figures of Archangel Michael and Christ. For others, they are Christ judge and an angel or may indicate God the Father and God the Son. To the right of these heads, hell is represented with figures of monsters demons that drag and torture the souls of the damned. On the left is heaven with the elect, with figures of angels with children symbolizing the saved souls. The arch of the left door depicts scenes from the Old Testament, with the righteous awaiting the arrival of the Savior. In the center of the first archivolt is God the Creator who blesses the pilgrim and holds the book of eternal truth. To his right are Adam, naked, Abraham, with the index raised, and Jacob. With them are two figures that could be Noah, new father of humanity saved through the flood, and Esau or Isaac and Judah. To the left of God are Eve, Moses, Aaron, King David and Solomon. In the second archivolt, the top, ten small figures represent the twelve tribes of Israel. <laughs> Facade of the Obradero The Obradero Square in front of the façade alludes to the workshop Obradero, in Galician, of stonemasons who worked on the square during the construction of the cathedral. In order to protect the portico da Gloria from deterioration caused by weather, this façade and towers have had several reforms since the 16th century. In the 18th century it was decided to build the current Baroque façade, designed by Fernando de Casas Novoa. It has large glazed windows that illuminate the ancient Romanesque façade, located between the towers of the bells and of the ratchet. In the middle of the central body is St. James and one level below his two disciples Athanasius and Theodore, all dressed as pilgrims. In between, the urn representing the found tomb and the star representing the lights Hermit Pelagius saw between angels and clouds. The tower on the right depicts Mary Salome, mother of Saint James, and the tower on the left depicts his father Zebedee. The balustrade on the left side depicts Saint Susanna and Saint John and the one on the right depicts Saint Barbara and James the Less, a stair allows entrance to the façade. The stair was made in the 17th century by Ganes Martinez and it is of Renaissance style inspired by Giacomo Vignola of Palazzo Farnese. 
It is diamond-shaped with two ramps that surround the entrance to the old 12th-century Romanesque crypt of the Master Matteo, popularly called the Old Cathedral. Between the existing plane of the façade of the Obradero and the old Romanesque portal Portico da Gloria, there is a covered narthex. This façade has become a symbol of the cathedral and the city of Santiago de Compostela. As such, it is the engraving on the back of the Spanish euro coins of 1, 2 and 5 cents. Topic: South Façade or Das Praterias. The façade of the Silverware Praterias in Galician is the southern façade of the transept of the Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela. It is the only Romanesque façade that is preserved in the cathedral. It was built between 1103 and 1117 and elements from other parts of the cathedral have been added in subsequent years. The square is bound by the cathedral and cloister on two sides. Next to the cathedral is the Casa do Cabido. It has two entrance doors in degradation with archivolts and historical tympanums. The archivolts are attached over eleven columns, three are of white marble middle and, corners, and the rest of granite. In the center are the figures of twelve prophets and the apostles on the sideline. On the tympanums is a large frieze separated from the upper body by a strip supported by grotesque corbels. On this floor are two windows decorated with Romanesque archivolts. In the central frieze is Christ, with various characters and scenes. On the right, six figures belong to the choir of Master Matteo that were placed in the late 19th century. The original provision of the iconographic elements was invalidated since in the 18th century numerous images were introduced recovered from the dismantled Asabitria façade. A central medallion shows the Eternal Father or Transfiguration with open hands and on the top surface there are four angels with trumpets heralding the final judgment. In the tympanum of the left door is Christ tempted by a group of demons. To the right is a half-dressed woman with a skull in her hands, which could be Eve or the adulterous woman. This figure is not praying on her knees but is sitting on two lions. The jams are St. Andrew and Moses. In the left abutment, the biblical King David seated on his throne with his legs crossed, translucent through the thin fabric of his clothes, and playing what appears to be a rebic, personifies the triumph over evil and is an outstanding Romanesque work, sculpted by Master Esteban. The creation of Adam and Christ's blessing is also shown. Many of these figures come from the Romanesque façade of the north or do Paraiso current façade of the Asabitria and were placed on this façade in the 18th century. In the tympanum of the right door there are several scenes from the Passion of Christ and the Adoration of the Magi. In one of the jams is the inscription commemorating the laying of the stone era, IC, 16, VIDUS, JULLII registration follows the Roman calendar, according to the computation of the Spanish era, corresponding to July 11, 1078. An image, unidentified, of a fox eating a rabbit and, against this, a badly dressed woman with an animal in her lap. Supported on the wall of the Tower Berenguela appear other images representing the creation of Eve, Christ on a throne, and the binding of Isaac. <laughs> North façade or Dar Asabitria The façade, Dar Asabitria Galician name derived from the jet gemstone is in the Praza da Inmaculada or Asabitria, draining the last section of urban roads French, primitive, northern and English through the old gate Frankigina or Paradise door. The Romanesque portal was built in 1122 by Bernardo, treasurer of the temple. 
This portal was demolished after suffering a fire in 1758. Some sculptural pieces that were saved were placed on the facade Das Praterias. The new façade was designed in Baroque style by Lucas Ferro Carvero and finished by Domingo Lois Montigudo and Clemente Fernández Cirilla in the neoclassical style in 1769, although it retained some traces of the Baroque. At the top of the façade is an 18th century statue of Saint James, with two kings in prayer at his feet Alfonso III of Asturias and Ordono II of Leon. In the center is the Statue of Faith. <inaudible> East façade or Da Quintana The façade of the cathedral that overlooks the Quintana Square has two gates, the Porta Real Royal Gate and the Porta Santa Holy Gate. The construction of the Porta Real, Baroque, was begun under the direction of José de Vega y Verdugo and by José de la Peña de Toro in 1666, and was completed by Domingo de Andrade in 1700, who built some of the columns that span two floors of windows, a balustrade with large pinnacles, and an aedicula with an equestrian statue of St. James now disappeared, well adorned with decorative fruit clusters and large-scale military trophies. The kings of Spain entered the cathedral through this door, hence its name, and the royal coat of arms on its lintel, the so-called Holy Door Porta Santa or Door of Forgiveness Porta do Perdon is the closest to the steps. It is usually closed with a fence and opened only in Jubilee years years when St. James's Day, 25 July, falls on a Sunday. It was one of the seven lesser gates and was dedicated to St. Pelagius, whose monastery is just opposite. On this door niches contain the image of James, with his disciples Athanasius and Theodore at his side. On the bottom and sides of the door were placed 24 figures of prophets and apostles including Saint James, coming from the old stone choir of Master Matteo. Inside this door through a small courtyard is the true holy door, which enters into the ambulatory of the apse of the church. <inaudible> <inaudible> Bell towers The early towers in the main façade of the cathedral were Romanesque current façade of the Obradero. They are called the Torre das Campas, which is situated on the side of the Epistle right, and Torre da Carica, to the side of the Gospel left. The two have a height of between 75 and 80 metres. The first part of the tower was built in the 12th century, but in the 15th century several modifications were made and King Louis XI of France donated in 1483 the two largest of the 13 bells, due to a tilt that was detected in its structure between the 16th and 17th centuries. The towers had to be reinforced with buttresses between 16 1667 and 1670. The towers housing the bells were made by José de la Peña de Toro in a Baroque style, and completed by Domingo de Andrade. The architecture of the towers has a great effect in perspective with its vertical lines and the sequencing of its floors. Topic: North Tower or Da Carica. It is located to the left of the façade del Obradero and was built, like its partner, on the opposite side of an earlier tower of the Romanesque period. It was designed by Fernando de Casas Novoa in 1738, imitating the bell towers by Peña de Toro and Domingo de Andrade in the 17th century. Baroque decorations adorned all kinds of ornamentation that provided a unifying architecture across the facade. Topic: <laughs> Clock Tower, Torre da Trindade or Berenguela. 
The clock tower, also called Torre da Trindade or Berenguela, is at the intersection of the Praterias Square and the Quintana Square. Traditionally, construction was thought to begin in 1316, at the request of Archbishop Rodrigo de Padron as a defense tower. After his death his successor, Archbishop Berenga de Landor, continued work on it, though these dates are questioned by some authors. When he became main master of the cathedral, Domingo de Andrade continued with its construction and between 1676 and 1680 raised it two floors higher. The use of various structures achieved a harmonious and ornamental design, with a pyramid shaped crown and a lantern as a final element, with four light bulbs permanently lit. It rises to 75 meters. In 1833, a clock was placed on each side of the tower by Andres Antelo, commissioned by the Archbishop Rafael de Vélez. As part of its mechanism, it has two bells, one, at the hour, called Berenguela, and a smaller one marking the quarter hours. These two were cast in 1729 by Guimes San Pedro. Berenguela has a diameter of 255 cm and a height of 215 cm, weighing approximately 9,600 kilos, and the smaller weighs 1,839 kg with diameter 147 cm and height 150 cm. Both original bells cracked, forcing their replacement. The current replicas were cast in Aston, Netherlands, by the Eisbouts House in 1989 and were placed in the cathedral in February 1990. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Interior. The cathedral is 97 meters long and 22 meters high. It preserves its original, barrel-vaulted, cruciform, Romanesque interior. It consists of a nave, two lateral aisles, a wide transept, and a choir with radiating chapels. Compared with many other important churches, the interior of this cathedral gives a first impression of austerity until one enters further and sees the magnificent organ and the exuberance of the choir. It is the largest Romanesque church in Spain and one of the largest in Europe. Topic: The Portico da Gloria. The 12th century Portico da Gloria, behind the western facade, is in the narthex of the west portal. It is a remain from the Romanesque period, a masterwork of Romanesque sculpture built between 1168 and 1188 by Master Matteo at the request of King Ferdinand II of Léon. The vigorous naturalism of the figures in this triple portal is an expression of an art form, varied in its details, workmanship and polychromy of which faint traces of color remain. The shafts, tympana and archivolts of the three doorways which open onto the nave and the two aisles are a mass of strong and vibrant sculpture representing the Last Judgment. The central tympanum gives an image of Christ in majesty as judge and redeemer, showing his wounds in his feet and hands, accompanied by the tetramorph. He is surrounded on both sides by a retinue of angels carrying the symbols of the Passion. In the archive altar represented the 24 elders of the Apocalypse, who are playing musical instruments. The column statues represent the apostles with their attribute, along with prophets and Old Testament figures with their name on a book or parchment. These were all polychromed. The faint smile of the prophet Daniel as he looks at the Angel of Reims is especially noteworthy. The middle pier represents St. James, his face conveying an ecstatic serenity. The text scroll in his hand shows the words Missit me Dominus, the Lord sent me. Below him is the tree of Jesse, the lineage leading to Christ, while above is a representation of the Trinity. 
It is customary for the pilgrims to touch the left foot of this statue, signifying that they have reached their destination. So many pilgrims have laid their hands on the pillar to rest, that a groove has been worn in the stone. The lateral portals are dedicated to the Jews on the left and to the unbelievers on the right. The right tympanum is divided into three parts and is dedicated to the theme of salvation. In the center are Christ and St. Michael, flanked by hell represented by demons and heaven represented by children. Purgatory is shown on the side. The left tympanum shows scenes from the Old Testament. Demons are represented at the bottom of the portico, signifying that glory crushes sin. Behind the portico stands the statue of Maestro Matteo, the master architect and sculptor put in charge of the cathedral building program in the 12th century by Fernando II. It is said that whoever butts their head three times against the statue will be given a portion of Matteo's genius and perhaps enhanced memory. There was formerly a long line of visitors waiting to touch their head against the statue, but it is now blocked off because an indentation started to develop from the repeated contact. The sculptures in this portico were a reference point for Galician sculpture until the 15th century. Topic: The nave The barrel vaulted nave and the groin vaulted aisles consist of eleven bays, while the wide transept consists of six bays. Every clustered pier is flanked by semi columns, three of which carry the cross vaults of the side aisles and the truss of the arched vaults, while the fourth reaches to the spring of the vault. Lit galleries run, at a remarkable height, above the side aisles around the church. The choir is covered by three bays and surrounded with an ambulatory and five radiating chapels. The vault of the apse is pierced by round windows, forming a clerestory. The choir displays a surprising exuberance in this Romanesque setting. An enormous baldachin, with a sumptuous decorated statue of St. James from the 13th century, rises above the main altar. The pilgrims can kiss the saint's mantle via a narrow passage behind the altar. In the choir aisle the beautiful lattice work and the vault of the Mondragon Chapel 1521 stand out. The radiating chapels constitute a museum of paintings, retables, reliquaries and sculptures, accumulated throughout the centuries. In the chapel of the reliquary Galician, Capella do Relicario is a gold crucifix, dated 874, containing an alleged piece of the true cross. <coughs> Crypt The crypt, below the main altar, shows the substructure of the 9th century church. This was the final destination of the pilgrims. The crypt houses the relics of St. James and two of his disciples, St. Theodorus and St. Athanasius. The silver reliquary by Jose Lasada, 1886, was put in the crypt at the end of the 19th century, after authentication of the relics by Pope Leo XIII in 1884. Throughout the course of time, the burial place of the saint had been almost forgotten. Because of regular Dutch and English incursions, the relics had been transferred in 1589 from their place under the main altar to a safer place. They were rediscovered in January 1879. <inaudible> <inaudible> A dome above the crossing contains the pulley mechanism to swing the Botifumero, which is a famous thurible found in this church. It was created by the goldsmith José Lasada in 1851. 
The Santiago de Compostela Botifumero is the largest sensor in the world, weighing 80 kg and measuring 1.60 m in height. It is normally on exhibition in the library of the cathedral, but during certain important religious holidays it is attached to the pulley mechanism, filled with 40 kg of charcoal and incense. In the Jubilee years, whenever St. James's Day falls on a Sunday, the Botifumero is also used in all the pilgrims' masses. Eight red robed tiraboleros pull the ropes and bring it into a swinging motion almost to the roof of the transept, reaching speeds of 80 km per hour and dispensing thick clouds of incense. Other burials Alfonso Daniel Rodríguez Castellau, at the Panton de Gallegos Illustres, Pantheon of Illustrious Galicians, Bonneville, Fructuosus of Braga, Rosalia de Castro, Fernando Pérez de Traba, Ferdinand II of Leon. Alfonso IX of Leon, Pedro Fernande de Castro, Gaspar de Orvelos de la Cueva. Topic: <inaudible> Old images. Topic: <inaudible> 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 See also. Santiago de Compostela Twelve Treasures of Spain <laughs>